Hey YouTube, Travis here. Well, it is a beautiful day outside, so I decided that today would be a great day to begin all the work that needs to be done on this Maxi N right here to really make it roadworthy. First thing I'm going to do, take care of that rusty gas tank. But before I do that, I need to drop the engine and I thought, hey, this would be a good little video to make. I remember when I had to take the engine off by Blue Poop the first time there was... <laughs> A lot of stuff that uh, I could have done better, so hopefully this will help somebody out. Alright, here we go. Okay, so in this video I'm basically going to be following along with what's recommended by the Pook Service Manual, starting on page 23. Uh, if you don't have a copy of this yet, I'll post a link in the video description that has a page with a PDF on it. It's really helpful to read through all that, just to make sure you know quite what steps you're going to be taking when you go to remove the engine off your bike. First thing you do is take off the side covers. Those are just going to be held on by bolts. You'll also probably be a little bit longer than this because I'm guessing you're not working on a Maxi N. Anywho, you take all those off and then the two side covers will just pull right out. Okay, go ahead and take your air box off now. That's just this screw right here. The plastic on this air box is broken as you can see so it's not going to be reused. Okay, once your screw's out, mine's not because it's just spinning but I know I can just wiggle it off like that. And then this pulls out. You might have a hose in here, you might not, depending if the previous owner was kind enough to leave it in there for you. Next step is to shut your fuel off and then disconnect your fuel line. Uh, since I was running an external tank on this bike, I'll show you on another one of mine. So with your fuel switched to off, um, this might not actually be the right position. I believe this pack cock is installed upside down. But anywho, that's what fuel off is for me. Let's go ahead and pull your fuel line off. It might require some wiggling, maybe a little bit with a screwdriver if your fuel line's a little bit older. Next, the carburetor is going to come off. Remember, again, this is just this one screw right here. And then you just turn and wiggle. And that's off. Okay, so it's also worth mentioning that after I take each part off, and this is especially helpful if you're just starting out, that uh, you bag and label each part. It's nice if you have plastic bags, but I just have paper bags today. So like there's the carb screw that's going in a bag, which then itself is going inside a box. So that way when I go to put this back together, it doesn't get mixed up with any of the other projects that I have. Okay, next we're going to take off the exhaust. One on each side right here, you'll need a 10 millimeter socket, a little one, and probably an extension. And then with some gentle wiggling, It'll just come down. And now your exhaust is probably hanging and pivoting by one little bolt right now. On most Maxis, right behind the uh, pedal arm, there's a piece of metal that comes out, and that's what the exhaust attaches to. Now I have a Maxi N, so the, the point where the bolt goes through is back there. And there used to be a little piece of metal that would uh, connect the two. I unfortunately don't have that right now, and uh, until I can get one fabricated, which shouldn't be a lot of work, um, I've got this bent piece of coat hanger here. So go ahead and take out that nut and bolt and then your exhaust should lift away. Okay now it's time to remove the master link from the chain so we can take the drive chain off. One of these links is not like the other. So go ahead and rotate your rear wheel until it comes into view. Hey there it is. Some people use a screwdriver, some people use their bare hands. You get better at doing these the more you do them. And up and over. Cool. Take my hand away. Maybe that'll help too. <laughs> Pushes up and out. That comes out. And you just push. Those chains tension really tight, actually. Cool. Now your chain's separated. Be careful not to lose these pieces. And now you can take your chain off. Easy. Okay, so next we're going to disconnect all of our wiring. Uh, I found this really nice screwdriver. It actually came out of the children's tool set, but uh, it's really good at getting into these little terminals. Um, now before you take these apart, uh, if you want, you can take grab your digital camera and take a picture of all this. This probably looks a little bit different than yours because the Maxi N had less uh, terminals. But anyway, uh, you can take a high resolution photo. Um, there's also wiring diagrams listed in the back of the service manual if you're more inclined to doing things that way. Okay. 
Okay, all your wires are out. Okay, so speaking of electricals, um, don't miss this one. It's right here. This is a 10 millimeter socket still. That can be an easy one to miss. <laughs> and then you slide this forward. There you go. Don't miss that washer there. Now the last real cable that we'll have to worry about here is going to be the clutch cable. When I first did this I made the mistake of uh, loosening it up here, which uh, you can do, but there we go. So that cable weaves down in there. Um, it's really hard to get it back in that way because the cable likes to fray out. So it's a lot easier if you disconnect it down here. So what you're going to want to do is loosen that adjuster until you get to the point where you can pull this by hand forward and then push that uh, NARP on the end there out. So this adjuster is not too hard to figure out. I backed off the nut on the very bottom here. So basically what you're trying to do is this bottom part here, spinning with this, the more of this is showing, the more it's going to loosen up. That's what you want. The less of this is showing, the more it's going to tighten up. Be careful when you're spinning uh, this bit right here that the nut's not turning with it or else you're not really doing anything. This is an 11 millimeter crescent wrench, so that's kind of an unusual size. So go ahead and get that loosened up. And yeah, this part's a little bit easier if you got more than one person, but you can do it yourself. Just pull out. Sorry, I didn't quite get it in the camera right there, but get your nub. This is where my finger is right here. This can get a little tricky sometimes. Cool. And there's the end of your clutch cable. Okay, next we're going to drain out all of our transmission fluid. Again, this is a 13 millimeter socket. Your bolt's right under there. Now this one has a stripped plug, so I don't think that there'll be much fluid in this. <laughs> yep, I guess not. Okay, for the final step, there's three bolts holding the engine on. One, two, and three. This one's covered in grime. Oh. This is why this was so hard to break free. Somebody put some blue Loctite on the engine mounting nut. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Hey, maybe if I'm lucky they did the same thing with this one. Oh man. Why would you put blue Loctite there? That's crazy. Now, like engine studs and stuff like that, absolutely, Loctite's great. An engine isn't something that's going to be stuck on a moped permanently, you know? I mean, mopeds, no problems, break down all the time, you know? <laughs> uh, whatever. Okay, and again, this is a part where it'd be kind of nice to have two people because at one point, uh, when you start pulling these engine bolts out, there's only going to be one holding it up and it's going to put some stress on that bolt. So if you have someone else who can kind of push up on the engine there, that's nice. Went ahead and laid my roommate's good blanket down there to uh, <laughs> catch the engine. There's the first bolt. See what I'm trying to do here is lift the engine up with my hand to reduce tension on it. This one's going to be a bear. All right, let's see what we can do. If that's even loosened all the way out yet. Crap, it might not be. There we go. Now, at this point, the only thing holding this motor up is years of grime and dirt. This is going to come forward like this. Also keep in mind, there will be nothing else keeping this bike propped up. So uh, have a friend ready to catch it or just be able to grab it and totally be a man. Here we go. There you go, there's your engine. So we're gonna lift back up on the frame. And it kinda slides forward as you can see. <laughs> hey, there you go. 
And be mindful of all your bits that are hanging down. Spark plug boot comes off, should have mentioned that. <laughs> Well, YouTube, there you have it. Uh, be mindful of all the danglies. If you want, you can take the top off the carburetor and the electronics off right there, but I'm probably just going to take all those cables and duct tape them up on the side of the frame. Anywho, that's how you get an engine off of a Pook Maxi, the E50 anyway. If you have the two-speed ZA50, there's a couple other things that are a little bit different, clutch cables a little bit different, but uh, this is what I have to show you today. So I hope you enjoyed the video.